Okay, we're back at it again today. All right, I'm gonna work on this uh, front fork. I gotta turn these down to make it work here for my bike. <clears throat> so that's the plan for today. Uh, the other thing that's going on today is, besides I already wasted half of it doing nothing, is that the race got canceled because of the rain. So now I have no place to play tomorrow. I have to get the bike ready to run at about 5 in the morning. Uh, oh well, I don't have to get it done today. But either way, I'm still going to work on my bike. Try to get it done. So we're going to have to make these bushings work. So what i got to do is i got to turn these down so they go together. And I'm going to turn this one flat so this will be smooth. So it'll seal oil. So first thing I'm going to do is face this one off. And then uh, it's not very thick wall on this. So I don't really want to turn the OD down. This is nice and thick wall here. So there's plenty of room to turn this down and make it go inside of it. So I think I'll just do that. Then it should be a nice fit, hopefully. We'll see. Now this is out of a 77 to 84. Three white light, and this is the stock painted stuff here, shovel head. So this is how you do your conversion kit between the two. <coughs> so we got three generation of fork we're mixing here. Okay, so I just cut it down flat and I turned it down until this chamfer was almost gone. So I can make it the same height on the other one. Looks like we still got a lot of wall thickness in here, so probably 316 still in there. Plenty strong enough. <coughs> Damn, they're all screwed up. So I cut some of them down to single mount, just by eyeballing it. Two down one way or the other is not going to make any difference on this project. So Close you got it? I got that close. Feel identical. That's cheap man caliper. This is real caliper. Alright, we are at 652. 650. So I cut it within two thousand by eyeball. There you go. Close enough. Doesn't really matter anyway. Okay, so now this does matter. We have to chuck this up here straight so I can bore this out with a boring bar in here. So this here is a boring bar right here. Oop, goes in like that. So we're going to have to dial this in with a dial indicator, get it straight so I can cut it. We have very little holding power here, which is not good for holding. So that's going to be kind of semi dangerous. Good chance we can wad this up. Very good chance of that. So we'll take it easy. Actually, I should look that chamfer bigger because I got to not bring the bottom of that hole. Oh well. Okay, so my vice jaws have big enough uh, grooves in them that I was able to grab a hold of it. So you see those grooves down in the vice jaw? So I stuck this part in there. Let's we'll see how close it is. That's plenty close enough for me. It's not perfect, but it'll work. 
Okay, so that's close enough, and it's not going to come out because it's held in with that real strong right there. Good. We can make that fly real easy. Okay. So, what kind of bit do we got in here? So you have to make the chamfer, you know, the part the same as whatever this cutter is. So I shouldn't have cut that one so much, but oh well, no big deal. We'll just shorten it up a little bit. Okay, we're going to do a cutter change here. This thing's well used and ground on because I'm cheap and I reuse them. Used to have more new ones over here, I thought. So let's go grab one of these. Okay, that looks like a nice sharp one. That is very sharp. It goes right to a point. That'll work. All right, nice sharp bit now, looks good. <clears throat> Where'd my wrench go? Setting up our bit over here. Yeah. It's hard to lay this where anybody can see what's happening. So we gotta center this into here. same equal height as that in order to work. If you're too low it drags on the bottom so you can't be too low. So you gotta be close. So we'll go here on the back side. Do a tangent line here. <clears throat> now you see where the blade is way at an angle look in there right now instead of being straight up and down it's like this that means the bit's too high you gotta lower it down a little bit until that goes vertical straight up and down that's how you set your tool to angles just gives you a reference point that's all that does so I have a little bit here I can see better for myself and it's pretty close now in there. Now we're slightly high. See how it's leaning just not quite straight like this. It's angled up a little bit. So I'm going to drop it down just a tick more. And we'll be good. That's how you do this stuff. Still a little bit high. Gotta make sure it doesn't drag on the bottom though. Dragging is bad. Yeah, it's about as close as we can get. It's on the verge of dragging inside the hole, so I gotta run just a tick up. So let's 
see what happens. The cutter will dig under here the bit inside the hole because it's not and it's not relieved enough relieved enough under it. So you have to run it just a little bit high to make it work. It'll still cut just fine once it's not dragging. Now if it's dragging, it won't cut for squat. Okay, so we're good on that part. So I'll put this on a number we can live with. Okay, we go in until we stop. Take our dial indicator here. Clean our crap off of it. Let's get that one over here. Appears to have a lot of buildup on here from using it. It's got a magnet, so it tends to collect steel for some reason. Okay, you laid it on ways down here. Okay, so we got this zeroed out now over here, right there. So we got to turn it on and see where it actually contacts on the inside. Make sure it rotates, it does. And we feed it in until we hear it hit. Right there, it's kind of hitting. So the zero's actually right there. Feed it out with this until we touch. Right there, it's just starting to hit. There's a couple foul right there. Two of our zeros the same spot. Oh yeah, right there is zero definitely. Slightly out of whack here. Got to bounce around a little bit. I might be able to take some of that out with a with a hammer in here. Try to make it run a little bit smoother than that. I don't like it bouncing so much. So now we got an idea where we're at. Give me a little hammer though to beat on it. <coughs> One of these. Okay. High goes up. So that means low goes the other one. <coughs> so right now we are only four thou out. Looks like it's more than that. So if I go right over here to the lowest spot. On a little bit. You gotta get the indicator off so I can change the indicator. movement. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see that or not. So come over here. We got one pound movement now. That's pretty good. Okay, I can live with that. Now hopefully the inside is a lot more even now. in here and see what this is this time. A little bit 
closer this time. Check for zero. Do this time around, I think. Okay, our zero change a little bit. So I'll just reset this over here now. <clears throat> All right. Now we just go ahead and do a little cutting here. And we'll dial in about 30 pound here. Get our cut. I didn't do is I need to make sure that the <clears throat> gonna make sure that this is not cutting more on this side than this side. So the way I can do that real quickly is I can touch off on it. Just come over here and look at my dial indicator. It's about 25. Go over here. It's about 28. So it's three thou difference. That's good. I'm just going to cut on this surface here, not the back side. That's good. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to go about that far. So I'm going to measure to see what the diameter of the hole is over here. About 792. We need to go up to 865. Some of the ways to go. So 9265 is <coughs> roughly about 70 pounds. <coughs> Damn, it's throat. I need to look to know what number I had set over here, so I'm not sure what I'm at right now. That's easy enough to reset it, find out. Right there. So that's about 55 on the dial over here. Yeah, it's just hard to move. Right here. So I just crank in a little bit right there and we cut it. So there's 20. There's another 30. Run number 4 this time. 30 thou seems to be a good number to use. I'm hand feeding this because I don't want to be under power. I want to feel it as I go. Chips are in there wadding up on everything. That's what that clunky noise is. Actually hitting up inside of here a little bit. <clears throat> All right. Give another 20. That'll be 50 total. We should have another 15 or so to go. I think after we're done here. The lighter cuts, so we shouldn't get some chunking in there, some chips.
Ah. Get your thumb too close to the back of the truck. Grab into something. <clears throat> Not paying attention. He rips the nail off. Chunks it. There we go, see. Chunk. Didn't need that, did we? Get my manicure file out. Knock off the high spots again. There we go. Good as new. We'll grab so much this time. Alright, let's see what we got for a dimension over here now. We we're around 40, 41. We had to be about 65 or something. 65. We got 24. Six, I think, or so. Maybe seven. We'll see. Adjustment. Adjustment made. That will affect other dimensions. Okay, what do we got now? Five nine five. We need to get to sixty five, so We're close. Fifty nine. Zero again. Five and dial now.
got over here? Sixty-three, sixty-three five. So we got about a thousand and a half press right now on this thing. Yep, about a thousand and a half press fit right now. So you should be able to stuff that thing in there pretty easily, but I don't want to be that much of a press fit. So come back and give it one more light cut. I can hold it in there with Loctite too. I don't have to have a press fit on it. cutting too much. Oh, that's a big cut. That's way more than I want. Yep, that screwed it up. Trying to go in. Be a nice press fit though. Okay, I didn't screw up. Right on the money. Yeah. Yeah, Sixty six is what it says. Theoretically, you should have a thaw gap on that, but you can see where the marks are not quite showing the same thing here. It's tight. All right, so that'll go in there pretty easily. Okay, now all I can do is deburr it. We've got chatter, chatter marks on the bottom. And the deburring tool over here. Chatter marks and let the oil leak through. That's not good. Those are not good. There's actually a gap in there, but not much. It'll be a press fit. Okay, I'm going to put a bunch of a uh, three bond down on the inside of this. I'm going to squish it down into there. It'll squeeze out through the hole, and that will seal it together here. I got a seal on the outside of this on the bottom of the original fork leg and then we still got to have a, some kind of a washer on the outside to seal on the bottom which is going to be hard to do because it's not supposed to seal like that on a Harley but we'll figure it out all right so there's that one okay so yeah, that's definitely going to be a press fit all right so I'm going to do another one just like it we'll be back